nature has given you so, so much beautiful things. What do we do? We use the germs to destroy and denature milk and produce beautiful curd and buttermilk. And the more you fer ferment it, the better it is because you get such fantastic germs and your immune system is from your mouth to your anus and this is maintained by these curds. Why? For right from the mouth. You know the Indian system of eating? The last meal you eat is curd rice. Right? Why? If you eat the last thing as sweet, it remains there and caries occurs in your teeth. When you have buttermilk, the germs in the buttermilk kill all the bad germs in the mouth, clean the mouth and leave only good germs in the mouth. If you use Listerine from the doctor's shop, you kill all germs. And if you don't have germs in the mouth, your mouth is destroyed in no time. You cut your tongue, within one 24 hours the tongue is healed because of the germs in the mouth. You every morning clean it with your Listerine mouthwash, you, are, you cut your tongue, it will take one, one week. And we have such beautiful things. Coconut water, coconut oil for example. Coconut oil is the best oil for human consumption. Because coconut oil and mother's milk contain the same fat. Monolauric acid, sodium monolauric acid. And monolauric acid is the base of Indian human immune system. No other oil in this world except mother's milk has this fat. If you see your infant feed, even when the, there was a big chorus against coconut oil, Indian infant feed has to have coconut oil as a base. Because if you put any other oil, the infant will die. Because mother's milk and coconut oil are the only two things that can digested in the mouth. In the mouth. Because a child up to the age of one year doesn't have pancreatic juice. And when you don't have pancreatic lipase, you can't digest fat. But salivary lipase digest fat in mother's milk and coconut oil. But that coconut oil was demonized for so long and we suffered. Now America says, no, coconut oil is very good. Coconut milk is very good. Actually, Americans now eat cornflakes with coconut milk and not cow's milk. And today every American house doesn't have so much of Coca-Cola in their refrigerator, but they tender coconut water in caches, big, big cartons. And you must see, I was telling Peter, there's the biggest uh, cash and carry shop, which is called Costco. Their head office, half the building is called Coconut Building. Americans are crazy after coconut oil. But a few years later, our own scientists were saying, no, coconut oil is very bad, it contains cholesterol. I used to tell doctors who said coconut oil contains cholesterol, that you must go to first MBBS and fail the exam. Because he doesn't know biochemistry. We all know coconut milk has many health benefits which is comparable to mother's milk. Try out this vegetable dessert made with coconut milk. Check out the link for the recipe in the description box. Cholesterol comes from an animal cell. It can't come from any uh, no, agricultural, I mean, uh, or uh, vegetarian cells. So how can coconut oil have cholesterol? So we created caste system among fats to say cholesterol is it's saturated fat, unsaturated fat. It's our own classification. We created that. And scientists created that. Scientists were created for saying that to make money. The reason was in the 30s, there was a big depression in America. And <coughs> up until the 30s, even bread was made with coconut oil in America. But the American farmers revolted and said, our soya ban is dying. And if the government doesn't do something about it, we will all go on strike. And if the farmers go on strike, the American president cannot be elected. So they called a few scientists, Sarkari scientists, and said, create a monster out of coconut oil. And they were there ready with their papers, beautiful papers published in the glossy journals. And they said, coconut oil is saturated fat, and saturated fat is very unhealthy because it becomes you know, cholesterol and triglyceride and what have you. And we, they built a big empire on fat. This lasted for about 20 years. Then came another era called the sugar era. In England, there was a big scientist called... Uh, what's his name? Um, Hofbrenn. And Hofbrenn produced the same data on cane sugar. Death rate due to heart disease in x-axis, y-axis and uh, sugar consumption x-axis, straight line. So he wrote a paper, pure, white and deadly. The most important cause of death is sugar and not fat. What they all missed is, when two things go up concurrently in society, they always have this relationship, straight line. But it's not cause effect. It's like saying, what's your normal blood, blood, blood sugar? 
who knows your blood normal blood sugar my blood normal blood sugar is different from your normal blood sugar what we are talking is average sugar if 100 people's blood sugar is plotted it will be a gaussian curve and what we have done we took the mean plus 2 standard deviation there is a statistical terminology and made it as normal which means all the other normals were outside the mean are all called false positives so if a patient goes in comes out a patient if a man goes into the doctor's checkup he comes out as a patient and if today we can check about 750 uh, parameters of your body called the total body scan and if each parameter has about 10 percent false positives imagine if 100 people go out 7500 people come out as patients beautiful business for us this is called disease mongering so we have to really go and find out what is good for food and very minimal food but food must be without chemicals and fertilizers the last thing what has food got to do with various diseases and how do you treat food food can be your medicine we have a new study on millets how many of you have done that millets millets are beautiful because we killed ourselves by depending on two things water rich vegetables water rich crops and then of course the various other things associated with that rice and various ir 180 this that and all kinds of rubbish diabetic eat chapati poor south indian housewife she has not cooked chapati and she is under stress and her blood pressure goes up but the husband wants only chapati and we have nicely done this because we have read the western books what do they do you take wheat and wheat gluten is the biggest harm for the pancreatic beta cells so if you take wheat you become a permanent diabetic for the rest of your life so we want to have more business if you take your own rice brown rice kai kuttalarsi you must see there's a beautiful chemical called metadicol which has got now us patent as the best medicine for so many diseases including diabetes and we don't eat that and we have been eating it for all our generations we have been eating brown rice and today suddenly the western style doctors say you eat wheat chapati and that too very interesting i went to ludhiana near ludhiana there is a small village where people do not eat PL480 wheat strain. They have a separate old wheat strain. That village has nobody who has diabetes. Can you believe that? Nobody who has diabetes. So now we have come one step further. We are depending for our seeds on some big western companies. Terminator seeds. And now we have been, you know, our scientists were very kind to allow BT cotton at one stage. And lot of farmers, of course, committed suicide. Now, Bangladesh allowed BT brinjals. We have a nice matti gullas in India. And BT brinjals, Bangladesh is ruined. Now, genetic engineering is another way of controlling the world through technology and money. We all know coconut milk has many health benefits, which is comparable to mother's milk. Try out this vegetable dessert made with coconut milk. Check out the link for the recipe in the description box. So the world has to be controlled through technology and money. You are spoiling our health. So friends, agriculture is very important for human health. A, you must produce enough for all people to avoid malnutrition or subnutrition, calorie subnutrition. And we have enough to eat, but don't overeat. As long as you eat, I, ideal thing is you must eat what your ancestors have been eating. You are not sitting in India, you are not eating olive oil. Olive oil is good for Mediterranean people, not for you. For you, coconut oil is what God, God has given you. And that's the best oil for you. Or gingerly oil. Or, you know, any, any other oil that is good for India. We take fruits from the Mediterranean place for our fruit. No, our best fruit here, the best fruit, you know, it must be fresh fruit because you can't get an apple. Apple has to come from, uh, from uh, say, Kashmir. When it comes to Chennai, there is nothing in it. Every 24 hours, 25 percent of the nutrients go. And you have nice water with junk which you pay through your nose. But you see your kua. I tell you, it's the best fruit for disease treatment. And the ideal thing for constipation. Because as you age older and are very tense, you're all constipated. So this is very interesting. And you get it fresh. You, on the roadside, you have still the leaves sticking onto that. 100 percent fresh. 
and banana, our own banana. But what do we do? We create the yellow color by giving chemicals and fertilizers. No, your own homegrown, kitchen garden grown. But in America today, you can't have a kitchen garden. Do you know that? But the large companies uh, influence the government, saying that if you grow a kitchen garden, you are arrested. You can't have your own cow because the milk sold in the dairies is uh, poisonous. No, you are arrested. Which means the governments are trying to help the industry. And I request government of India should not do that because we are not aping the West. Friends, food cannot be divorced from health. Health and food are very so very complicated. And people who don't know what human health is should not meddle with advising the government about food and agriculture. So you must have a holistic approach. When you deal with the food, you must know what the, what the food is eaten by whom. Whether it's animal or human being, you must know something about the human being. Here what happens? Science is divided. We don't have holistic scientists. We have reductionist scientists. So this reductionism will destroy science forever. Because the second law of thermodynamics says anything that divides eventually disappears. Thank you very much.